hey, what's up, everyone? Facebook, YouTube. Sorry for the delay. Um, had some audio issues uh, with my StreamYard. Let me know how everything is sounding here. Also, sorry for this camera. It is really, uh, really warm and kind of purple. Um, so I had to kind of divide and conquer on where, what cameras I was using where. So bear with me on that. But thankfully, we're not looking at me all day. So we'll be looking at this guy right here. Uh, big drum roll, please. So first time debuting on a Learning with Line 6 live stream. We have the Pod Express. Um, something I've been very excited about for a very long time. Uh, you know, just been you know wanting to tell everyone about it, and now we can. So super stoked about it. So thank you all for joining today. Um, let's see what I'm gonna do is we have this here. Let's do my little face cam right there. There we are. So now you can see me. Um, so cool. All right. Well, looks like we already have some uh, people in the chat today. Um, maybe I can answer these questions real quick and um, then we can get started. So can you turn off? Um, so starting off here, Sergio, can you turn off the cab simulation only or does the amp and cab turn off together? Great question. So you could do one or, you know, one or the other. So currently I could, um, you know, turn off amp and cab by going to this little dot right here that's your off position and so obviously if you want to choose a uh, you know if you want to turn just uh, amp modeling off that's where we'd go there obviously we use the amp encoder to choose our amp but if we want to choose an uh, choose a different cab we would press tap and alt and then now that LED turns pink and so this is where we could choose our cab. So if you want to turn off just cab uh, modeling, we would just go back to that little, uh, you know, to that little period looking thing right there, right? That's the off position. So if you want to turn off amp and or cab uh, modeling, that's what you would do there. So great question, Sergio. So yes, if you want to use Pod Express as, you know, just effects, you can do that. If you want to use it just as an amp, um, just as an amp and cab or, you know, maybe you have a cab sim that you're using already, or if you want to just send Pod Express to a, uh, you know, a traditional amplifier, you could do that as well. Keep in mind that is a power user um, kind of feature here. Um, you know, Pod, uh, Pod Express was, you know, honestly designed for, you know, maybe someone who is getting their first model, or maybe they're new to guitar, um, you know, or maybe it's someone who's been playing guitar and they just want to dip their toe into modeling. Um, you know, and so it's a very cost effective and an amazing, you know, product to get started with because it's compact, it's battery powered, and it has, you know, <laughs> models from the Helix family. So every amp, cab, and effect is pulled from Helix. So if you think about it, it's like having Helix in a tiny little pedal. So great question, Sergio. Let's go down here. Michael Cox, how you doing? Thank you so much for joining today. Michael Cox, any way to line in something from a phone you're practicing to and accompanying it? Well, what's great about Pod Express is looking in the back here, we have our USB out, our USB-C. So obviously right now I'm sending my you know signal into a computer, but if you're an iPhone user, you can use the uh, Apple uh, camera kit, um, Android users as well. So pretty much you would connect this to your smart device and you would use Pod Express as your sound card. And so if you think about it, plug in your phone, pull up YouTube or Spotify or whatever it may be. Um, so you could definitely, you know, start practicing or jamming along with music. So great question there. <laughs> Are we giving one away? <laughs> I wish that'd be great. Maybe in the future. Um, so great. Already sold out in Sweetwater. Really? Okay. Good to hear. Good to hear. Mine will be delivered tomorrow. Awesome. Thanks for the response. Is this the same models as Catalyst? There are some um, some of an overlap, and so, hey, Chris Payer is in the house. What is up, man? This is a Line 6 product specialist here, so I'm sure uh, Chris will uh, be able to answer any questions that I don't get to. Chris, thank you so much for being a part of the stream all the way from Canada, so thank you very much. Um, so is this the same models as Catalyst? Well, you know, I think we could just kind of dive into it here. I have a little thing, uh, you know, ready to go. Let's, uh, you know, let's start off with the cab models. So looking at um, Pod Express here, we have seven cabs, or seven amps, 
And these are the cap, uh, the amp models here. So as you can see, there is a little bit of a overlap. So when we look at, let's say, the heavy uh, model, the Line 6 Oblivion, um, you know, that's where we're going to start seeing uh, that overlap from Catalyst. But everything else is pulled, um, you know, from Helix. So for those of us who maybe aren't aware, um, you know, this information can be pulled from the owner's manual. Um, so if you want to reference this uh, after today's live stream um, and you want to just learn a bit more about it, grab that owner's manual and just pop it open, you know, and, it, and it, it, it'll be kind of like you having your own personal hands-on demo with the product because you could just kind of, you know, see what controls do what and so on and so forth. So those are the amp models there. Let's take a quick look at the chat here. A lot of chatter today. Um, great product. Can you tell us the name of the cab sims, please? So uh, we have this question here um, from Charlie. Thank you for joining today, Charlie. So the cab sims, um, what's going on with the cabinets here is this is the same IR based cab engine. Let me uh, make myself a little smaller here because pod is uh, we want all the spotlight on the Pod Express, not me. So we are using the same IR-based cab engine that you would find in Helix, um, also in the 2.0 update of um, Pod Go as well. So these are the cabs, um, you know, and again, if we want to select a different cab, you just press Alt and Tap at the same time and move the encoder. Um, so these are the same cabs here. Now, pretty much what's going on with these cabs is uh you know the microphone the placement all of that has been already set uh with our sound design let me move this guy back here uh, there we go now everyone can see me um pretty much like i was saying the mics the placement have already been set by our sound design so that's something that you know you don't have to worry about it's already set for you that's why i was saying you know when you think of pod express um just think of you know, someone's first modeler or, you know, maybe something for a backup rig, um, you know, for, for a last minute gig or, you know, or if size is an issue and you just want to be able to show up to the gig with a gig bag, um, you know, Pod Express is perfect for that. And then, of course, the ultra portability of Pod Express is, you know, again, having um, that USB-C out so I could record and have those sessions with my laptop. Um, and keep in mind with a P with a Mac or PC, it will be pow it can be powered by you know the bus power of your USB connection. But what's also really cool is how it's battery powered, you know. So you can really show up anywhere, and as long as you could plug into an audio source like a speaker, you know, an amp, a powered speaker, whatever it may be, you know, anywhere you are, you're going to be able to power this up, you know, and go straight to the gig. So that's what we have there for our cab sims. Again, it's uh, that AR, that IR based um, cabinet engine that you will find in Helix and that was introduced um, into Podgo with the 2.0 update. So great question there. Um, let's see here, Andrew, will it be possible to load your own IRs in the future? Um, I don't have any information on that at the moment. Um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure, I don't think so. Um, you know, I don't believe Pod Express was really designed to be this, you know, kind of one and everything, but who knows what the future holds, but you know, the official statement that I could say right now is I um, currently no, and that's, and I, I don't have any other information on that, but great question, Andrew, much appreciated. Um, let's see here, question, is there an app or PC Mac um, software to set the presets? Um, right now, no. And um, again, the official response to that question is, um, you know, I have, you know, there's no other information on that at the moment, but currently there is not. Um, but thank you very much for that question. Very good. Um, and then Jay, same question, right? So again, that answer is there. Nope, there is not one um, currently. Is there going to be one in the future? I, I have no idea. There is no information on that currently. Um, but as you know, with Line 6, we are always innovating and we are always, uh, you know, doing some cool stuff. Okay, so right here, uh, yep, oh nice, USB will power out, that is awesome. Yes, if you are connected to a, uh, you know, to an actual computer, um, you know, in some, you know, we, us at Line 6, we never recommend USB hubs, but you can try it. But 
if you are um, if you are connecting to a phone or a tablet, it will not receive. There's not enough power coming out of those devices to power up your Pod Express. But hey, being you know battery powered, no worries there. But again, if you're if, if you don't have batteries or a nine barrel you know or a nine volt DC barrel connector for the back, um, you know you would be able to power it through the USB. Love these questions, guys. I haven't even had to play guitar yet. So killer, keep them coming. So let's see, uh, Ch uh, Charlie, thanks for the info, I'll buy it for sure. Let's see what we have here from Charlie, thanks for the info, I'll buy it for sure, use it as backup during touring if anything happens to my Helix, sounds great. Beautiful, Charlie, thank you so much for joining today. Um, let's see, does the U, let's see here. Does a USB port power it up? Donnie, I think uh, maybe, not sure if you heard my response earlier, but if you are connected to a to an actual computer, yes, it will be powered through USB. Um, is the output line level? Yes, it is. Um, output is line level. Um, let's see, can you turn, uh, Daniel, can you turn amp models or effect models off and just use one individual effect if needed? Of course, and I could show you that here. So, um, Question, amp models and effect. Okay, so if you wanna turn your amp model off, you would just go to the off position, which is essentially six o'clock. And you could do the same thing where maybe you want an amp model, but you wanna turn the cab model, you wanna turn the cab modeling off. You would just hit alt and tap simultaneously. And you'll notice, here, I'll use two hands. And you'll notice how the LED turns pink and then now it's off. So now cab modeling is off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a different preset. If you want to turn an effect off, so right now I'm choosing, you know, the distortion, the fuzz. But if I go all the way counterclockwise, it disables that category. So taking a look at Pot Express right now, here, let me just go to like the clean. And I'm going to roll every single effect knob counterclockwise. And then let's go over here. I haven't played guitar since we started, so let's hear something. And let me know if the levels are a little off. So right there, I'm like, okay, that's a nice sound. If I press Alt, I could turn the amp volume up. And if we look here in silver text, channel volume, bass, gain, mid, treble, these are amp parameters. So I feel that that clean was a little hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn the gain down just a little bit. Very nice, I could turn the amp up a bit and you know what let's give it a little more gain so right now I have no effects if I want some effects now I could just crank up that reverb a bit now I'm into spring reverb turn it up a little bit and then again no no effects at all just turn it all the way counterclockwise there you go it's that easy that quick nice and simple so that's how you do that there great question thank you so much Daniel um, so loading a loading a preset how do you review the settings of that preset well you know when it comes to when you load up a preset when you move the effect knobs around um, you know so for example let's say I go you know so you have 21 presets and I think this is really cool. You know, obviously you could use the foot switches to toggle through the the the, uh, the presets, or you could use the amp encoder. But what's cool is you have three pages of presets, and every page of preset is a different color. So now I'm in page two, I'm in page three, and then now I'm going to go back to page one, which is this white ring. So there's no way of really knowing at the moment like okay is what distortion am i using what modulation am i using but when you are adjusting the amp parameter uh, pot express will tell you what that parameter is set to in the preset and you'll notice so for example let's look at where the bass is set so i'm going to press alt and i'm going to adjust the bass and you're going to note you see that right there so watch you'll notice the ring tells you exactly where the setting is so I believe it was like right there around dynamic if we go to gain I can move my gain around who knows where the gain is so we'll see here okay and now let me move back the entire ring will kind of and if you go too fast you'll miss it 
It's just kind of like an unofficial way. So you see that it's kind of hard on camera to see, but the ring will ignite, letting you know, like, hey, that was that was the uh, default or the save setting there. You see how it kind of blinks right there. So that's one way to do it. Otherwise, you know, how do you know which distortion or which delay? Um, it doesn't tell you, and so it. You know, I think it's just kind of designed to kind of, you know, just be whatever sound you need at the moment and not dive so deep. That's why I was saying earlier, you know, think of little Timmy's first modeler or something like that, right? So great question. All right, we have a bunch coming in, so I'm gonna try to answer every single one of your questions. Um, let's see, a good backup lightweight format no, uh, to my stop, exactly, totally. Um, is the switching between presets seamless or is there a dropout if you set foot switches to scroll up and down presets? So there is actually, you could set this, um, this behavior in global settings. So, you know, obviously there's so, only so much we can talk about in a live stream, but that's why, you know, I implore all of you um, with, with the question like this, Ryan, this would be a perfect time to open up the owner's manual because there's going to be a global settings list. And in that global settings list, you can choose whether the presets load instantly or not. And so currently the default, I believe, is the presets um, instantly load. So let's take a listen and see how that how it sounds. So you're wondering, hey, is there going to be a gap between presets or not? Well, let's go into preset mode. Right now I have kind of this special, uh, the special uh, amp model, which is also the preset. <laughs> lay down for now. So I'll select that preset, but I'm just going to hit a chord and, and siphon through the presets and you tell me what you think. You see, that that's that's pretty instant right there if you if you ask me. So you hear that, right? You hear that that's instant. So there really is no dropouts, but you can set in global settings in Pot Express where that won't happen, where you actually have to press both foot switches or amp encoder to load the presets. So you have the choice, because for most of us, we want our presets to load immediately. But if you're someone who, well, I want to stay here on dynamic and just have crunch ready to go for this you know, next chord change or whatever it may be, you can go into the global settings and set that where it's not instant and so, great question, Ryan. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see here, moving down the line. I'm glad it isn't bean shaped. It'll look great on a pedal board. I agree. Um, it's it's killer. It fits anywhere, and um, it's just a you know beautiful, sleek looking product. Um, so let's see here. Are, is there different output settings for going into the front of the effects returner van amp? No, uh, nothing like that at all. This is just you know imagine you know really think of. A pod go in this size of format just ready ready to hit the road you know so there there isn't these deep deep settings um, designed for effects loops or, or power amp input or anything like that because that wasn't the customer that pod Express was you know really thought you know was aimed for um, you know th like I said like I've been saying um, you know early on you know, someone who's just dipping their toe into modeling, someone who's probably new to the game, um, you know, maybe, you know, little Johnny who just started playing guitar, you know, and they, you know, they just, you know, they want to get into modeling, you know, but the cool part there is like, oh, well, you know what, you can practice with it, you can record with it, you can, you know, stream music with it, um, and jam along with your Spotify, whatever that may be. And of course, you have your stereo outs and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, so no, you can't, you know, there isn't anything to really change the outputs for a, uh, you know, you know, for a power amp in or, you know, anything like that. So great question. Moving on. Um, how many patches can you save? Also mine's on pre-order and our basis bill has the base version on pre-order as well. Great job, Daniel. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate that. You can save up to 21 presets. And so again, if you were to push both foot switches, you could use either, you know, either foot switch to go up or down through the list or use the encoder. And so you have three um, pages of, of uh, presets. 
and giving you 21 or 21 presets all together and so beautiful stuff right there so that's how many you can save thank you guys very much um can you set the amount of repeats on the delay so daniel you can't go in and you know think of you know setting the amount here with uh you know with your pod express so since there is no editor or anything to really go in and say hey i want a quarter note or i want you know a dotted eighth with a bunch of feedback um what you have here is you have this kind of classic line six styling where you choose the effect and then as the intensity grows you're going to get more um, of that feedback you're going to get more of a mix and a feedback simultaneously so for example you know we'll just go to this you know tape delay i love my tape let's go to something a little crunchier one of my favorites lead so let's see here i know i had to i had my levels kind of all over the place so Now, now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with some, uh, you know, with some gas now. So I'm just going to turn the boost down a bit. So let's look at delays. So right here, I'm just turning the delay on a bit. Let's give a little more juice. All right. So let's go to our tape delay. So that's about one. Let's go about halfway up. Let's go all the way up right there. So you can see, just depending on how much intensity you want. And then of course you have your tap tempo. So if I want something a little slower. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, it's all about on how you dial in the intensity. And so you can't really just go in there and tell it, you know, how much feedback or anything you want. If that's something you're interested in and and you want and you need or something, then I would say go check out PodGo. Um, but for here, no. Um, you know, just wherever you want to move that around. And honestly, like, I, <laughs> you can't get a bad sound out of this thing. I've tried. Um, even my two-year-old daughter picked it up the other day as I was playing, and she's all moving knobs around. And and it, no matter what she did, it sounded good. And so it's it's a killer, killer thing. I wish I had this when I started playing guitar, you know, 17 years ago. Um, I just would have been, you know, compared to the little silver two-button foot switch thing I had, you know, when I was, you know, 14, this would have been a lot better. So... Beautiful. Um, so let's go down here. Thank you, Daniel, again for that question. Much appreciated. Let's see. Um, let's go to Jay. I thought of using a, um, Express to compensate for the lack of DSP capacity in HX Stomp, but it seems like Express can be used alone. I, I totally agree. It, you know, honestly, like for someone like me, having these four effects is all I would ever need. Um, you know. We could dive in if you, if if everyone would like. We could dive in on what each of these models are, especially if you're a Pod or Pod Go or Helix user. You will recognize every single model that Pod Express has. Um, again, because it's you know it, we're you we're using models all derived from the HX family. So let's see here, beautiful. Can I run this? Can I run this as a preamp? Um, it, you know, it really all depends what your setup is. Um, you know, there's really no right or wrong, right? You know, when it comes, if it sounds good, it sounds good. So can you use it as a preamp? Well, when you think of these amp models, these are the full HX amp models. So any amp model I go to, you know, when you think of a complete amp model, that's the preamp and the power amp. So yes, you could send this into a power amp. You may get some more you may get some more frequencies and stuff than you would if you were to use like PodGo or Helix where you can choose just the preamp model. You may get a little more oomph out of this guy, but you know, but yeah, totally. Why couldn't you? You know, if it sounds, you may have to do some tweaking on your actual traditional amp, um, but you could definitely do that. 
Um, but just keep in mind these are complete amp models. They're not just a preamp or a power amp model. It's the full, you know, complete amp model. So again, like I said, you may get, you know, some more frequencies and volume than you would if you were to just be using a preamp model of the amp models we have here. But of course, you know, um, you definitely can. It's sending line out, so you're not going to hurt anything. Um, try it out. You're not going to cause a fire or anything like that. So I would, I would give it a whirl and see how it works for you. Let's see here. Will you also show the base one? So Camille, I love that you asked that question because that will be our subject for next week. And so any of you bass players out there, anyone who wants to take a look at the uh, Pot Express bass, we will be talking about that one next week, next Thursday, same time um, on our live stream. So instead of me, you know, thumping around on guitar, you'll hear a guitar player trying to play his way on bass. And um, so we'll have a lot of fun there. So definitely come back next week. All right, let's see here. Wow, sounds seamless to me. I told you. So, you know, it's very, very impressive um, what this little guy can do. Uh, very impressive. So uh, let's see here. Philip, uh, is the only changeable parameter on the reverb the tap tempo, or can you change the pitch, tone? So, Philip, I'm sure you're curious, you know, can, can you change, you know, anything from... You know, if you're looking at like the high cuts, the low cuts, uh, the dispersion, um, any you know anything like that with the reverb, no, you can't. Um, just like how we saw with uh, just like how we saw with the delay, um, you know, moving moving an effects knob or moving the reverb effect knob around is just going to ad adjust its intensity. You know, so for example, let's go to crunch. So if I want, I could go to plate right here. And let's go halfway up. I could turn it down a bit. So as you can see, you can just you can only adjust its intensity. You you can't get that deep. And it just sounds so good that just you you it just sounds like I have an amp in the next room mic'd up. Sorry, but yeah, no, it just, it sounds good. That's one of my favorites right there. And again, what's the crunch model again? The crunch is that placator dirty, man. It just sounds so, so good. <laughs> Like something so little could sound so good. It's just so awesome. We could even throw in that face. <laughs> it just sounds so good. It just yeah like I, that that's my that that's like my setting right there and you know what that's the preset I didn't I didn't do anything to it so if you pull this straight out of the box that's how it sounds and um, that's the thing that I've just been floored about it is I just I haven't had to do anything to it um, it's th that's why I was saying earlier it, you, you just can't get a bad sound out of it okay sorry for um, for uh, brutally murdering a uh, some Van Halen licks there. So let's see here. Um, I get that a computer will power, but let's see here. Um, I get that a computer will power it up, but will a phone charger cube connected to a USB wire power it up? For example, I'd like to plug it into my USB port in my car to power up so I can play in my car. It very well possible. Um, you know, is when you think of the USB send from a computer, um, you know, the bus power isn't a whole lot. Um, and my apologies, I don't have in front of me the numbers on exactly how much voltage it will take to power this up. But I imagine a cube, um, 
should be and would be enough um, depending on its output could you know it very well could be enough to power up pot express um i'm sorry i don't have the answer for you on that um i haven't heard a, a definitive no you know but you know i i've known there's there's people right now who are powering up modelers using you know brick chargers for you know the chargers where you could use you know where you could plug in set a couple ipads and a in a phone or something you know there are people using that to power their boards so i'm sure it would power up and honestly if it only if it's only taking three double a batteries to power this up for you know for at least six hours i'm sure a strong enough cube can power it up so definitely give it a try um who was that that was donnie donnie give that a try and let us know i'm pretty sure it'll work out for you but there's no official word on it so i can't give you a you know a double thumbs up yes it will but um just going off of its requirements for power that i know right now i'm pretty sure it could work just ensure that cube is one of the bigger ones and not the smaller ones all right let's see here great question um powell uh this effect can create a huge reverb um tone like ambient reverb um sorry i don't know why my uh screen kind of went out there um let's see here let's go all the way down making sure i'm not missing anybody the questions are coming in uh all right okay just want to make sure everything's looking good so let's go back to powell here um, this effect can create a huge reverb like tone ambient reverb i'm pretty sure it can let's take a listen so let's so if we want something kind of you know and again I'm, I'm going off of presets here guys just you know the stock presets um let's go to something like the special if you want something let's turn off everything else. check out this space this space is very ambient But this space, this uh, this space reverb is very ambient. Now maybe throw in a little chorus. As you can see, that is very, very uh, spacey, and you know what a what what a better name than space, right? So that's where you're going to kind of find that ambient sound. If we turn it up all the way, I'm sure it's going to be way too much. trail off i have ducking on my on my uh, microphone so it'll cut me off um so as you can see you can get really ambient with it that's probably way too much reverb for myself or the next uh, for or the next guy but yeah as you can see you can get some ambient sounds out of this easily all right let's move on through here um sorry if i'm uh if i'm a little back on comments here they are just coming in but i want to make sure your uh your question is answered so if you ask something and you've been waiting you know a couple minutes for me to get to it please hang in there um i will get to your question um very soon um let's see here uh nice i could see using presets almost like snapshots same as amp model just effect exactly ryan a hundred percent and it's so easy to switch from you know preset to preset and as we as we've been seeing it instantly loads so totally um let's see here uh while limiting it seems like the perfect thing for on the go jams for quick recording yeah totally and like i said you know we we didn't design this thinking you know oh someone isn't going to need their their helix anymore or this or that like i said you know for for those who are just dipping their toe or just you know getting started with modeling this is a perfect introduction and for those of us here a lot of us here you know asking questions um most of us here don't seem like this is our our first modeler you know most of us in this chat right now on this live stream um seem like 
uh, you know, you're very familiar with modeling. And so even, you know, a product like this is useful for yourself, but imagine if this was your first time getting into modeling, it's great stuff. Now, again, we, we did see that, uh, I do want to show you though, the signal flow. Um, I think we just kind of jumped right into questions, but this is the overall signal flow of pod express. Now there is a noise gate in the signal flow. And, um, so just so you can kind of see how the flow is here, there is actually a rhyme and reason going on. So your gate and distortion is before your amp, um, your volume pedal, because yes, you can connect um, an expression pedal to your, uh, an expression pedal or a foot switch or two foot switches. Um, you can control the volume with an expression pedal. Um, and that's all you can control with a, an expression pedal. But then when we look at the modulation delay and reverb, these are after the amp and they are in stereo. Now, when we look, if we want to adjust the noise gate, if I push tap and alt at the same time, the gain is going to be your threshold and then your mid right here or your modulation is going to be your, uh, is, uh, your threshold and this, is, this will be your decay. Um, now for your amp model, we have channel volume, gain, mid, bass, treble but there's also master volume and presence. So if I hold alt and tap, the bass is your master volume and your treble is the presence. So when you think about it, you have complete control over your amp parameters and having that noise gate can be really huge if you're getting into these heavier sounds. So keep that in mind as well. Although off the bat, you may think, well, I only have five knobs right here it's a little limiting but when you really think of those power user deep dive features um it's it, it's very remarkable and very um you, you just have a lot of control over your sound much more than you would think off of a first glance of a pod express beautiful qu uh, questions looking through let's go here um can you stream music um and play along with the unit um, Philip, but yep, yeah, as long as you're plugged in with your device via USB into Pod Express, you can jam music through it, plug in your headphones on the side, and there you go. You can start jamming with your music. Maybe it's on YouTube. Maybe it's music that's downloaded locally on your device. Or you can just go straight out to your speakers of whatever that may be, and you're good to go. And think about it. Right now, you're listening to me through the USB connection. I'm plugged in um, with my guitar cable, and this USB is going into my Logic Pro. And out of Logic Pro, it's getting fed into this live stream. So you're listening to the ex to the direct out from this Pod Express. I plugged it in. It shows up on my computer, and that's it. Of course, if you're a PC user, I believe there's an ASIO driver you need to download. But if you're a Mac user, um, you just plug in, and you, know, you just hit the ground running. Um, let's see here, uh, what's the best way to connect to speakers, 3.5 headphone out or maybe quarter inch to RCA plugs? It all depends on the speakers you're using. Um, you know, with, with studio monitors, I can go direct from quarter inch, from quarter to quarter. Um, really, any cabling you need. So you, it looks like right here, um, to RCA plugs, if your speakers or your system only accepts an RCA input, you can definitely do that. Really, any way to connect, um, you know, it's like if you're plugging into headphones or a, a jack that would accept a stereo input, then I don't see a problem using the headphone out, the headphone outs. But um, you know, if you do, or if you're using an RCA thing where you know, you know, you're using a you know red and white right for left and right, if if you wanted to go quarter inch to RCA, no problem. Um, you could definitely do that. Um, wow, the lead channel sounds amazing. Okay, I could see we're catching up here. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It sounds great. Um, Podgo for under 400 bucks. It's insane and it's cool as heck too. Yes, it is. It's super light. It's awesome. It's killer. I love it. Um, let's see here. Will there be an edit software in the future? Will you be able to upload third-party IRs? How about turning off CabSim and one output to connect to power while using the other with CabSim on connected to the PA? So... Um, Real quick on that, is there a editor currently? No, there isn't, um, and I don't have any other information to offer on that. Um, if you want to turn cab, if you want to turn amp modeling off, just go to the off position where we don't see a uh, LED. The same goes for the cab. When you push Alt and tap, you can select a different cab, and you'll notice the LED is pink instead of red, 
And again, just like with the amp, if I go to the center six o'clock uh, area right there, that's turning the cabinet off as well. So you can use Pod Express as just an amp or just a cab or just effects or a combination thereof. Um, so great question there. Um, Jay, this is exactly the Line 6 quality sound that I like, love it. Um, there will be a lot of copy. We are used to that, so no worries. Um, it's funny how every modeler has uh, colored foot switches now, right? So it's like, it, it's just the greatest form of flattery, as they say, right? Um, let's see here. Can this be used as a fly rig? Is it tough enough? Well, you know, of course it could be used as a fly rig, but it all depends on, you know, how, how, how you treat your stuff, right? You know, um, you know, my cell phone goes everywhere with me, you know, and it, and it's fine. And why? Because I put it in my pocket, I put it in my computer bag, I take care of it. But if I'm throwing my phone around all over the place, even though it travels with me all over the world, it's going to break, right? So just think of how you take care of your gear. Is this going to be, you know, if I throw this in a, uh, you know, in a flight case and it's not secured and it's just rolling around and falling and this and that, could it break? Probably anything could break if you don't take care of it. So yeah, if you if you just if you travel with it with care, I I don't see why it wouldn't uh, make it. And how the internals are, it's not you know, it's it, it's made very well I would say. But hey, it's brand new. I haven't been on the road with it, but I I would imagine so. Just you know, it, it handle with care, right? <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's see what's going on here. Consumer best value. I like this better than the IR2. It's cheaper, definitely. And you know, the Boss IR2 is a great pedal, but you know, it's for a different customer. You know, um, I, I wouldn't say, you know, this is, you know, th this is a direct competitor. You know, it could be seen as it, but it's it's a different customer than what the IR, the Boss IR2 is, is for, right? So completely different customer. If anything, I could see someone using both of them on the same pedal board. Um, you know, imagine the possibilities there even, you know, it's just, and that's just what's fun about being a guitar player nowadays. You know, it's like we have so much, so many toys and so much fun we can have, right? Um, so let's see here. Uh, can I use this on a live gig with an external volume? Yes, you can. So looking at the back panel here, we have uh, the volume input right there, you see? So I could connect an expression pedal, and when we look at the signal flow chart here, after the cabinet is the volume pedal. So if I connect an expression pedal right there into the volume jack, I could control that volume. So yes, you do have external volume control. Um, let's see here, is there a desktop app or Bluetooth that has a, nope, currently there is not. Is there plans to for the future? I'm not sure, I have no information on that. Um, will you review the base uh, pod as well, the Pod Express? Yes, we will next week. So keep in mind if you want to check out, um, pretty much be doing what we're doing today, but with the base, we're going to be doing that next week, Thursday, um, 11 a.m. Uh, P uh, PST. So uh, let's see here. Does this have balanced outputs like the Pago? Yes, it does. So the whole idea with Pod Express is out of the box, whether this is the first time you know, maybe you just started playing guitar or maybe you've been playing guitar for 50 years. The whole idea is that you take this out of the box and it is ready to go. Whether you're going direct to front of house, whether you're plugging into a computer or you're just plugging into a speaker at home and you're, and you're practicing. Um, it, it's all ready to go, line level. You know, you don't have to worry about adjusting anything from, you know, mic level or line level. It's, it's, it's not complex like that at all. Um, and that's the whole idea behind PodGo. If you want to get that complex, go get a PodGo. Otherwise, you know, Pod Express is just very simple, gives you great sound right out of the box. And as you can see, I've been using presets this whole time, and I think they sound fantastic. Um, is the overall volume adjusted? So, great question there. So, yes, the master volume is on the left side, but this is not controlling my output volume with my USB. My USB right now, that is just the line level. It is not affected by the thumb wheel on the left side. However, the thumb wheel on the left side does control volume for all outputs other than the USB. So whether you're connected via head via headphones or through the uh, through the outputs in the back, the quarter inch outputs, this will be your, your PodGo master volume control. 
Um, again, it only it, it controls all the outputs except the USB out. So great question there. Show me, uh, let's see here, G-Man, show me preset changes, please. Happy to do so. So let me make sure my logic, sometimes with logic, um, if I don't press play on it, it'll uh, kind of get weird and, and just kind of be uh, delayed. So here we are. So what I'm gonna do for you, G-Man, right here, I'm just gonna hit a G chord and I'm just gonna go through the first seven presets. the foot switches or the encoder <laughs> so as you can see you can go through those presets very quick they load immediately but like I was saying earlier you could actually go in through the global settings and you could assign it where it will not load instantly where it'll be where you know clean is active right now but special isn't i would have to push both the foot switches or the encoder to load that preset so definitely check out the owner's manual and check out the global settings tables just so you can see what you can actually do and for for the volume input i could actually connect one or two external foot switches and i could assign the bypass state of each effect to one foot switch so if you want to become a power user for the, you know, for Pot Express, you can actually do that and have even more control um, over the bypass state of your effects. Um, what kind of firmware updates can we expect? Well, you know, this product just came out, so I'm not, I'm not sure. We'll see what the future holds. Um, and you know, yeah, you know, I, I have no information on that currently. It is so new in the in in the game, so new to us that um, I'm not even thinking of firmware updates at the moment. But we have a USB input, so anything is possible um, over here at Line Six. So you want to go from a clean to overdrive distortion easily, totally. Now again, with how these presets are designed right now, is out of the box. I have these you know each preset is one of these amp models so I think of this as preset one preset two and as you can see I have 21 presets um, that I can go through right now so I'm in page two and now I'm in page three so if you want preset one to be your clean and preset two to be the heaviest of the heavy you can do that it's just how pot Express is out of the box is the first the first seven uh, presets are the seven amp models but you can make these presets whatever you want them to be so keep that in mind um, even here you know here I have a nice clean sound but if I go back oh no we can't do it that way um, because if I go back I'm gonna go to that uh, to that list right there to the uh, page three but like I was saying it all depends where you want to save your presets um, so for example if I want to you know move this one over here so I'll load that. I could go here, say I want to save this preset. You just push on the amp encoder and I'm going to move it to that position. Push, and there we are. So now I'm in clean. I could go to distortion. So as you can see, you can move presets around, copy one preset from location to the next, whatever it may be. So great stuff. Um, let's see here. Does it have both left, right stereo out used for a two amp setup? Um, so yeah, we do have a stereo left and right out. So if you want to, if you need to send it to two different locations, you definitely can. Um, yours should be t here tomorrow. Beautiful. Love it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It is awesome. Let's see here. The PV Panama is my main go-to on Helix. I'm so excited to see it as a lead channel. Having my favorite tone anywhere battery powder is going to be awesome. Andrew, love it. I know. I was I was really, really impressed and really happy when I saw um, the model list for Pod Express. Um, lead is modeled after the PV um, after the PV5150. Is this PV Panama from Helix? Yes, it is. So if you want, just because I can't really talk about in you know, I can't, as far as, as I know, I can't really talk about saying, hey, you know, we did this from this brand or whatever. But what I can tell you is these are the names of uh, the Helix models 
And so if you are curious exactly what the U.S. Princess or the Matchstick, uh, Matchstick Channel 1 or the PV Panama, if you're really curious, well, what the heck are you modeling? Um, what amps are you modeling uh, to get these? Check out uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the user manual for either you know, Helix, let's say, or even Pot Express. We will tell you, um, and you'll be able to check those out as well. Um, so let's see here. Do, 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 do. When you played the Van Halen licks, did you have a boost and or an overdrive effect on? I'm not too sure. Um, let's see here. So pretty much, I just went to the preset. So here's the lead. You know, and I have a little bit of the little bit of the plate dialed in. And so the distortions, let's turn that down. No, I think that's just the amp. And let's take a look here. The distortions that we have, these are the distortion models. So the boost is a Minotaur. And so that's my favorite. Yeah, no, that's just... God, it's been a while. It's just such a good, good sound. So no, no boost there, but hey, we can add some. So let's add a little bit of that Minotaur right there. Anyways, so you can see, those are what we have for the boost. And hey, while we're at it, this is what we have for the modulations. So for the chorus, it's our plastic chorus. The flanger is the gray flanger. If we all know what that square box, that's gray. Um, script mod phase. Um, again, go open up the Pot Express owner's manual and you'll be able to say, well, script mod phase, well, what effect are they modeling? Check out the manual and it'll tell you right there. Here's the delays that we have. And so again, 17 effects, including a looper. So if you want the looper, you just go all the way to the right side and there's your looper. And um, you would use the on foot switch to you know, play overdub, um, or well, to record, play, overdub, um, undo and stuff like that. And then finally, our reverbs. And as you know with us, these are our line six reverbs. So uh, if you think of the uh, dynamic spring or, you know, or the hot springs, dynamic hall, dynamic plate, and then the space, I'm not too sure what the space is. Um, it's very, very, uh, it's very ambient, but um, I'm, I can't recall which one it is because it doesn't have any of the like uh, modulations or octave in it. So I know it's not like the plateau or anything like that. So I'm not sure if this was a, a new reverb for Pot Express, um, but hey, um, you know, when you get your Pot Express in and you start messing around with it, maybe you'll be able to, you know, figure that out. Like, hey, that's that reverb, you know, the line six, whatever, right? But currently, I think it was maybe um, made just for Pot Express. Um, I'll have to, uh, more on that when I come back uh, next week. But those are the effects there. So any questions we have on the effects, feel free to send them in. So great stuff, uh, Jim. Sorry that I kept your question up over that. If anyone needs uh, to see the, the model list again, please let me know and I'll be happy to throw that up on the screen. Um, so show me preset changes, please, going from a clean um, to overdrive to full distortion. So it really, uh, you know, it really all depends on how you, you know, set your, set your presets up. So currently how I have these right now is I have a, a clean then I have a heavily distorted and then I have an overdrive so I'll show you kind of in a different um, different uh, format than you asked so currently here's clean what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit a chord and go through them my apologies so that should give you a pretty good idea there that, you know, depending on how you save your presets and where they're placed, um, you know, around the ring, um, it, it's going to load them instantly. 
So keep that in mind. Uh, very, very seamless, G-Man. Thank you. Um, you see, and that, that's always a very good, uh, very good advice right there. Um, not giving it enough power is okay, but giving it too much is no bueno. So definitely. Uh, you know what? What's funny is I've always felt with that amp that I've had to really dial it in. And I think it has a lot to do with the cabinet and the miking as well. Um, when I... When I went to this lead channel, when when Pot, when I first got my Pot Express months ago, um, I was like, man, what amp are they using? It sounds so good. And then when I found out that it was the PV Panama, I was like, oh, I, I was really, really surprised and really impressed. So, Constantine, if you're getting yourself a Pot Go, I would not... I give it the benefit of the doubt currently don't don't be like eh already because even i was surprised at how great it sounds um and again like i said it's i think it has a lot to do with the miking and the cabinet because like i was saying earlier the cabinets and the mics well essentially the mics and the placement on pot express are already fixed for you um our sound design team dialed these in and um I, I was just blown away at how good that amp sounds because I've always felt too that you know that amp takes a little bit of work to really get cooking and right off the bat here it just sounds phenomenal um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that amp model because it just sounds so darn good let's see um, but yes the PV Vitro that that's a great sounding amp as well you know and it's it, it's very in your face but I think if you were to get have one of these Dial this in, maybe you know, mess with the distortion or or mess with the overdrive or the boost. Um, you may you 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 will you will probably get to what you want, um, but definitely give it a look. See, let's see here. Um, can you turn the effects on and off with the foot switches? So yes, you can. You can actually repurpose the uh, foot switches in global settings to do different things. So if you want the tap foot switch to do something else. It can. If you want to add two additional foot switches in the back, two external foot switches, you can turn individual effect categories on and off as well. But right out of the box, you have bypass for the entire Pot Express and tap tempo. And of course, as you know, if you push, you're going to get yourself a nice tuner as well. So that's how, you know, what line, what line six product doesn't have a tap tempo? Um, that's also the tuner, right? So right now I'm tuning my E and now I'm tuned, ready to go. So there's your tuner there. But yes, you can um, bypass individual effects by repurposing the foot switches or adding additional external foot switches. Again, check out the, the uh, Pot Express user manual uh, and um, our owner's manual and check out that global settings table and you will be very surprised at exactly what you can do. And again, everyone, these are deep dives, we're deep user um, kind of dive-ins uh, or, or power user features here. Um, and so if you want to get that deep, you definitely can. Um, I plan to use it for streaming. I hope it can quickly change from clean to, it can, it definitely can. And I'm, and I hope, I hope that uh, that little demonstration I gave you uh, a moment ago um, conveys that message because you know I'm I'm doing a live stream now and I've been an answering question after question and I'm immediately just able to switch over and show you there. So as you can see, it it, it will be able to do that for you, no problem. Like it, like I said earlier, it all depends on where you have your presets saved, right? So beautiful stuff. Okay. What we have here from Arthur, I'm so blown away by the amp tones available on this thing. Me too. And again, our sound design team, how they dialed in the cabinets, I'm just blown away myself. I'm like, I, I'm like, you know, if I'm go, if I'm going to record something or do something, I don't have to worry about you know moving the mic around or anything like that. It just sounds so darn good. That's why I was saying, you know, in the very beginning, like it's hard to get a bad sound out of this thing. Like you kind of have to try to get a bad sound out of it. Um, so great stuff. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dwayne uh, picked this up to add to a travel board, which will be a backup for my Helix. Decided to try this one out with my other pedals. I think you will have a lot of fun. Um, I've been just having a blast with this thing, and I'm so glad we can talk about it now because I've been so excited and been having so much fun with it. Um, you know, it's been so hard to keep uh, you know your our lips sealed. You know, when you have something so cool. 
Um, let's see here. Are the cab sims tied to the amp or can it be tweaked via the app? So there is no app, um, you know, to do that. But pretty much to kind of, you know, to answer that question, whenever you choose a different cabinet, whenever you choose a different cab or a different amp, whenever you choose a different amp, the cab is perfectly matched to that amplifier. But if I want to choose a different cabinet in, you know, for example, you know, these are the cabs that are matched. So the clean is matched to a U.S. Princess. And the reason why is, you know, the clean amp is a U.S. Princess. So if you if you look here, these cabinets are perfectly matched to the amp. But if I want to change that 110 U.S. Princess on the clean to, let's say, the 212, you know, that chimey cab to that 212 match H30, all I would do is hit tap and alt, and then I would move the uh, amp encoder to chime. And so by moving it to chime here, and it's pink, so I know it's the cab model, by moving it to chime, chime is going to give me that 212. So although the cabinets are perfectly matched to the amp model, you can change the cabinet anytime. So great question. Thank you very much for asking. Um, let's see here. Can the uh, can the EX1 pedal be used as a volume pedal? Jay, it sure can. So again, in the back, you just would plug that EX1 or really any expression pedal, standard expression pedal, into the back panel right here where you see the volume jack input. And in case you didn't see it earlier, this is the signal flow. So the volume pedal is what would be controlled by the expression pedal. And as you can see, the volume pedal is behind the cabinet. So that's perfect, especially for those of us using tones with, you know, with a bit of gain. Um, it's going to control volume and not gain. And so if you, you know, want to kind of control gain before the amp, you know, you would, you would do the classic roll down on the volume on your guitar, right? But so that's where the volume pedal is placed. Um, plugging in an expression pedal in the back volume in the in the rear panels uh, volume jack will control that um, Let's see can you demo it with a uh, Can you demo it with a two button? I'm sorry since I'm since I'm a little since I'm catching up to the questions here um, I'm not sure which demonstration you'd like to see with the two foot switches So definitely ask again and when I get to it, um, I'll see if I can um so going through here, how would you dial? How would I dial in a brown sound? Well, hey, you know it. Uh, that could be really um, up to anyone on what you consider a brown sound. I consider you know kind of like that Eddie Van Halen um, kind of sound being that brown sound. Warren D. Martini, George Lynch. Um, you know, honestly, what I think is a great brown sound, and I've showed it a couple times, is this is either the crunch or the lead. Um, so the crunch is that placator. And so that's what I was doing earlier. I think that is, I think that is a fantastic kind of brown sound. You know, you could crank up the mids a little bit. Oh, kind of turned up the mod. But yeah, you could crank up the mids a bit. You know, I would go into the plate reverb, of course. Maybe not too much. I just like reverb just to be a, just enough. You know, really, you could use either amp model. And then I'm just going to switch. Instead of changing presets, I'm just going to change the amp model right now. Here's the lead. You know, any kind of sound you're looking for. <laughs> you could have uh, have a lot of fun doing stuff like that, right? All right, so yeah, amp uh, brown sound. I would go with either the lead or the crunch, you know, and move these guys around however you see fit. Everyone's playing style is different, so some may like you know the boost, where others may not. You know, for me, I myself love the Minotaur, and so I'm always whenever I put in a, a an overdrive, you know, I'm kind of just using the boost. Now the D's one mod. Um, you know, so that's modeled after you know that orange pedal uh, from that uh, brand from that uh, company named Boss. And so, if you could think of DS1, what does that sound like? Um, DS1, right? And so, want to make sure I'm not you know calling out other companies too much. You know, I've got to be careful here. But 
that's what we're doing there. But I think uh, the boost, you know, for me, I'm always using that Minotaur. And for those of us um, who know what that, who know what that is, you know, imagine being able to get your hands on that, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar overdrive pedal and having that in in this little box because you know that's what we modeled. We we modeled you know the one of the originals and a good one. Um, and so think of that, you know, just that one model alone, you know, it, it, it's like tenfold, if not more, hundredfold of the cost of just a one pot express. So getting through here, uh, would it be possible to have this unit to test on my channel? Seems quite nice. Um, uh, Neil, hey, definitely uh, reach out to us. Um, you know, maybe we could connect you with uh, AR, whoever it may be, and they could always send you out a pilot unit. Um, let's see here. You need to buy, I guess I have a bunch of YouTubers got this already. Can it be like, <laughs> okay, I see what's going on here. Can it be mapped to change channels? So no, pretty much everything that you've seen me do here is what, um, pod express can be done or what can be done on pod express. Um, so no there, can I buy everything? I never, okay. Scenario external. Um, so let's see here. Scenario, external two button switch, three button toggle, distortion, one button switches between two amps. Can it be done? So one button switch between two amps. So pretty much the only way to switch amps is you're going to have to, the only way to switch amps is either manually or having a different amp assigned to a different preset. Um, three button toggle, distortion. So yes, you can have, for example, I could have the tap foot switch I could have the tap foot switch be assigned to, let's say the delay, two external foot switches to reverb and mod. And so what does that do for distortion? I believe, I believe the on foot switch can also be set in global settings to bypass a specific effect category. So yeah, and then if you push both at the same time, you're going to be able to change presets. So you can get very, very close to that scenario. Um, so we'll have to, again, like I said, if you really want to know 100% in, you know, just get some extra validation to that question, go on our website and check out the owner's manual for Pod Express. Look in the global settings table. And for those of you who are, who, who are really curious, oh, well, can I do this? Can I add that? You know, and these are really deep power user requests here, which are great check out the owner's manual, look at the global settings table. It will literally tell you all of that and, um, and how to get there. And so if you're on the fence about maybe purchasing one because of those questions you have, that owner's manual is gonna tell you everything more. But yes, I'm pretty sure you can do that scenario. Um, again, if you need to switch an amp model, that's going to have to happen in a preset fashion. All right, um, let's see here. If I shred so hard that I melt plastic, do I win a prize? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the next stream, let me let me talk to my manager and see if we can uh, get that going. <laughs> um, let's see, be interested if you could load with specific amps. Let's see here, would be interesting if you could load what specific amps you want into it available through line six. Totally, and um, you know, could 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 it be made possible? Probably, um, you know. But I think the idea here, like I was saying earlier, you know for those who are just getting into modeling or for those who may want a backup unit, um, it's perfect for that. But if you're looking to load specific amp models, impulse responses and stuff like that, you know, I think we would say, you know what, maybe, maybe you're a pod go customer. You know, it's really easy for so many of us to get a brand new product and say, man, this sounds great. You know, what, we, what would have been great if there was a screen on it, if there was this, if there was that, it's really easy to do that. Um, and so in a situation like this, if you're looking to go, man, I want this, I want that, maybe pod go is the product for you. Um, you know, because over at line six, you know, there's mad scientists over at line six, you know, they could do anything, you know, you name it, they could do it. And so you really just got to think of the right product for the right customer that you are. So let's hear, um, is there a degree of compression built into it? You know, taking a look at the signal flow here, there is no compression um, in the signal flow. So I'm going to say no. And it's not like there's, it's not like there's hidden filtering or, you know, anything like that in that regard. 
Um, you know, the one thing that's set in stone that you don't have control over is, you know, is what microphone is, is in front of the amp and in the parameters of that microphone. Um, you know, it, those are the things that are kind of like set in stone that you don't have control over. But it's not like there's some compression or anything like that happening um, in the back end that is like invisible. So I'm going to say no. Um, there is no any, there's no degree of any compression built in. But good question, Jacob. Thank you for asking. Um, do you plug it in an amp or a powered cabinet? Um, so really, it's up to you. You could plug this into an amplifier. Um, I would recommend plugging it into the effects loop, going st straight into the power amp in if possible, or make the amp really clean. Um, but where it's really going to shine is, uh, you know, definitely if if you, I'm talking about using amp and cab and effects, plugging it into you know a powered speaker, um, it'll sound fantastic. But if you do want to use this with an amplifier, um, again, you could always run it through the effects loop, like I said, or I could turn amp modeling off, amp in the cab modeling off and use just effects. Um, I could use an amp and then turn the cabinet modeling, you know, and turn the cabinet modeling off by pushing these two right here. Turn the cab, the cab modeling off with an amp and some effects and I could run it into, you know, into the front of an amp and kind of use it as a preamp with effects. You know, it, you could really, you know, sky's the limit. You could really plug it into whatever you want and um, adjust it. Look in here, um, what would be a compatible external foot switch is honestly like from any, you know, any known brand, um, you know, Roland, Boss, anyone, any, uh, any, any external foot switch would be great. What I use and what I love, and I actually have it right here. So I don't know how well you can see it. This is, uh, this two button right here, it, you have uh, you know two quarter inch outs. This is the Mission TT2. So here, I'll go over, um, where's my mouse? There it is. So this is the Mission TT2. And so what's great right here, this is a dual foot switch and you could actually open it up and there's a little dip switch inside and I could use one TRS cable. So I could use one TRS cable and go into Pod Go or into Pod Express and I could have two foot switches. Or if you want, you know, you could run two quarter, two regular um, TS cables out and use it with whatever else you want. But, you know, if you were to look in the owner's manual, if I use two external foot switches, you're going to have to go a quarter inch into a TRS to TS splitter and then go in, you know, to this input here. But using something like the TT2, I think this is like 40 to 50 US dollars. This thing is killer. Um, but you can use almost any, you know, any uh, external foot switch or any foot switch from, you know, any well-known company. Um, you know, you don't have to use anything special. Um, as long as it's a, uh, you know, a, a latching or, mom you know, latching or momentary foot switch, you can use it. But again, I have to give credit where credit is due and that Mission TT2 is killer. I love it. Um, let's see here. So I love how everyone's kind of, you know, helping each other out, talking with each other. Um, we have a great community happening here um, and lots of involvement. Love seeing what I'm seeing. Uh, does it sound good with external pedals in front of it? Um, let's say in front of it, like boost or overdrive pedal. I don't see why not. Um, and so Jim, again, let's refer to the, uh, into the uh, signal path here. So keep in mind if the noise gate is on, if the noise gate is on and if it's set high, you know, you may have to have a workaround with that, but let's ignore the noise gate. But if you can see here, anything you, any pedals you have before Pod Express will be processed before the distortion block that we have here. So if you think about it, if you want to use an external, if you, if you want to use an external uh, overdrive or distortion, you know, you could always turn the distortion off here, let's say, and, and use, you know, your beloved whatever it may be. Um, or maybe if you have a compressor, because I know I've had some users ask, yeah, you know what, I, I just love compression. I can't play guitar without a compressor. Well, hey, you know what, when, it take, when we look at a signal flow, you, you know, it's always wise to put your compression before your distortion. So you could totally run into a, a boost or a compressor before you run into your pod express why not you know it, you're you're not going to wreck anything it, it should sound good 
Um, so I'm going to say yes to that, uh, to that question. Um, let's see here. Any chance the sound design team will share how the cabs were set to copy the settings in Helix? Um, so Daniel, so what I know for sure, um, when we look at the cabs here, you know, these cab, the mics, the cabs, which is from the complete new IR based, um, speaker cabinet engine that we have in Helix. Um, everything is the same straight from Helix. The one thing that sound design did is they chose the mic and they chose its position and they dialed it in their way. Are there plans for them to talk about how they did that? I'm not sure, but that's a really good question. And you know, that could always make for a really good, uh, some that could always make so for some very good content in the future. Um, so thanks for that. What I'm going to do since I've been talking nonstop, um, I'm going to take a quick drink here. Ah, gold peak tea. So good. All right. So let's go on down here. I'm loving the questions. They are not stopping. Uh, let's see here. Bring back the, in <laughs> bring back the insane name for my nostalgia. Oh, I know. I can't recall the last time I saw insane, um, on a line six product, but, um, <laughs> I know that is, that's just part of the uh, line six way, right? The insane uh, model there. How, how, how to know when you're a uh, legacy line six user, just <laughs> the insane model. Love it. Thank you, man. All right. Um, you think you could dial in the brown sound better? You probably could. And um, what I would love for you to do, Bad Brad, d get one of these, dial in that brown sound, and post that on our uh, on our uh, Facebook page. I would love to hear it. So please, please, um, show me how it is done. Um, going down here, I pre-ordered mine last night. Perfect for not stacking too many pebble, uh, pedals. I agree. It's killer. It does what you need need it to do. It's small. It's compact. It's ultra portable. Um, this is a very awesome usable for a cruise ship musician um, who's normally used to DI guitar on the lounges and theater. Very much so. And honestly, 21 presets and all in and, and 17 effects. You know, I don't see how you couldn't do gigs like that with a Pod Express. And especially having battery powered, right? So if you're in a situation where you, you got to connect quick or maybe there's an outlet, God knows where, or something I think we all can relate to. Have you ever plugged a, your amp or your pedal board into power where it sounds terrible? Where it, you're, you're getting frequencies from an outlet that you've never heard before. You know, you're, you, you think NASA is tapping into your, um, into your power source, right? Um, <clears throat> Beautiful having these uh, AAA or these AA batteries in the back, and guess what? They're included, so you don't even you know you don't even need to worry about that. Out of the box, you're ready to go. So let's see here. Um, the minute the Minotaur might be a digital clone or some famous pedal. Uh, you you are you are heading down the right alley there. Um, so let's see here. I've someone had a two button switch added to it. Yes. So definitely whether it's two, whether it's two separate foot switches or a dual foot switch, like the mission TT two, I just showed you. Um, definitely you can add that and you can assign the bypass state of any of the effect categories to those foot switches. Um, Let's see here, uh, but this pedal are reliable for everyday gig as a cruise ship musician. It very well could be like, that's how I was saying earlier. It all depends on how you take care of your gear. Um, you know, again, you know, we don't have a steel or a aluminum box here. It is plastic because we're thinking of portability and the cost. Um, because again, you know, the cost is a huge thing here too. If we're looking for our first modeler or something as a backup, but as long as you take care of your gear, I don't see why this couldn't, you know, go from the bedroom or the rehearsal space to using on a cruise ship or for, you know, for fly rigs or anything like that. It's all on how you take care of your stuff, you know, um, like I like the analogy I gave earlier, you know, my MacBook Pro here, like, you know, is that roadworthy? And it's like if I'm tossing it around or I don't care where I put it or I just you know, throw it on a table. Yeah, this two thousand dollar computer is going to break down on me. But guess what? This computer has been all over the all over, you know, the West Coast with me, and it's fine. Why? Because I take care of my gear, and so as long as you take care of your gear, I don't see why it wouldn't be roadworthy. 
um, for those kinds of gigs. So great questions, guys. Um, let's see here. We're all talking to each other. So what is the best way to turn off or boost for solos? So again, what you can do here, Richard, is you, you know, with 21 presets, I could always have, let's say, the same preset in the next slot, but with a boost turned on. So in the same setting, in, you know, I could have the same amp, same, the same preset I have here, but in the next preset up is the same amp and same effects and everything, but maybe the boost is just turned on. Another way of turning a boost on and off in the middle of a song is adding an external foot switch. I could add one or two external foot switches and assign this category to that foot switch. So I could have this preset where, oh, you know what? I want this much boost. And if I have an external foot switch assigned, I could turn that on and off. So maybe maybe I'll do another stream or maybe I'll, uh, I'll include it with the uh, Pod Express base. But what I'll do is I'll do another stream where I have this foot switch hooked up to Pod Express to show you that. So that'll be good for another time. So if you're curious on using external foot switch with Pod Express, I'll include that with my uh, Pod Express base demonstration next week. Um, because um, I'm getting a lot more questions on that than I anticipated. So my apologies for not having that um, ready to go today. Uh, let's see here. I don't need a screen. I would like to hear your guitar volume dropped on the lead channel to see if it cleans up. Hey, that's a good one right there, Arthur. So we're talking about the lead channel. Let's go here. So, you know, I earlier I was demonstrating it without a boost on. So here's that preset right there. You want to hear how it does cleaned up. All right. So, so this one is for Arthur Gonzalez right here. So now, let's see how it cleans up. see if there's a noise gate on this so what I'm gonna do is turn the noise gate down all the way just in case I'm not sure if there's a noise gate on this preset since I didn't write so let's roll that let's roll that volume down that's not too bad It cleans up and for being a uh, the PV Panama amplifier I would say that is pretty darn clean for that high gain amp model so beautiful I hope that answers that question there Arthur okay moving on here amazing technology cheers thank you very much thank you for being in the stream today um, are there plans for a desktop application um, I have no info on that currently so um, so, you know, I would say just stick around and see what news um, comes in the near future, but um, I have no info on that, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I've heard there is Jacob, blah, 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 blah looking here. Um, looks like we're getting kind of that loading symbol. Not sure what's going on there, so sorry, Arthur. Um, was the idea floated about having an acoustic version uh, with acoustic IRs? So with conversations I have I haven't picked that up but um you know I know acoustic is a big deal and it's a big thing so who knows what the future holds but I I don't know um you know we'll see in um in the future uh for sure uh going on here did you show the interface yet I want to be able to use this and watch a guitar lesson while hooked up to a computer going through bluetooth or earbuds 
um, I want to be able to use this and watch a guitar lesson while hooked up to a computer. So pretty much how you would do this is you would plug into your computer via USB and then you would plug in your headphones, let's say, or your earbuds, um, you know, to Pod Express. Now keep in mind, Pod Express doesn't, um, you know, doesn't have any uh, Bluetooth uh, capabilities to it. So you to hear your guitar and a uh, and anything on your computer, you're going to have to plug in your headphones into your Pod Express, or you could kind of do what I'm doing here where I have Pod Express going into my DAW. So whether you are using GarageBand, Logic, Cubase, whatever, you know, anything that's free as well. So you can use a DAW or any other music, um, you know, kind of software where I could send the audio from my pod to my computer. And so I'm using Logic. Let's say I'm using GarageBand. I could send Pod Express to GarageBand put on my headphones or my earbuds via Bluetooth that are connected to my laptop. And so all of the audio coming out of my laptop are going into my earbuds. And so I could hear my guitar, I could watch a video, whatever that may be. So that's that's how you're gonna have to think, you know, when it comes to, you know, jamming along with music or a guitar lesson on your computer with Pod Express. You have to be interfaced with this USB somehow. So hope that answers your question there, um, Joel. But um, the interface, this is it. Um, there's no computer editor or librarian or anything like that um, due to its simplicity. Um, in the future, will there maybe? Just you know, who knows? Just you know, I have no info on that. Just uh, you know, just uh, keep uh, you know, keep connected on our socials and stuff. And whatever comes out in the future, you will be one of the first to know. Let's see, the balance output thing is big. The manual seems to suggest it is unbalanced. Um, Dan, it is, it, if, I do if I do recall, it is um, unbalanced. Now, when you think of something like an HX Stomp or an HX Stomp XL, those quarter inch outs are balanced. Um, so you could go a TRS to an XLR out. But like I said earlier, you know, that's, that's like a more of a professional or more of a uh, power user request um, and that's where I would turn you towards something like um, Podgo or a HX Stomp. You know, this isn't for, it wasn't really designed or thought for that, um, that kind of customer who needs, you know, that kind of a thing. But um, if that's really, really important to you and that's something you really, really need, I would look at one of our other modelers for that solution. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Great question here. Can you adjust EQ of the amp models? You sure can. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And so what we got here is when you look at the silver text, so yes, this is our amp, this is our distortion, that's our modulation, reverb, delay. But look underneath in the silver text here, I have channel, amps channel volume, the amp gain, the amp mod. And how we change that is by pushing the alt button and I can move the amps gain the amps bass, the amps channel volume, the amps mids, and the amps treble. Now, if you want to get even deeper, you could also adjust the amps master volume by pushing the tap and the alt button simultaneously. And now the bass is master volume and the treble is your presence. So you can adjust all the amp parameters directly from those knobs in the alt button. So yes, um, you can adjust the amp parameters of each amp model. So, uh, so yep. Uh, so I'm assuming your um, your question is, uh, you know, can this be powered by a standard nine volt DC power supply? And the que and the answer is yes, it can. So if you have something like a one spot or a DC brick of some kind, you can totally power Pot Express with your typical center negative um, nine volt barrel DC connector, you know, or you could always, you know, roll over to our website or, you know, whatever dealer of your choice and, you know, pick up a line six DC one. So if you're a current line six user and you have a, you know, DC one power supply that will power your pot express. So DC one, that's what's powering like, you know, for example, any of the wireless stuff, um, uh, a, uh, 
DL4, um, you know, things like that, a, a, a HX1, you know, so that's what the DC1 will be, you know, will be, would be useful for when it comes to Pot Express. So yes, any 9 volt or RDC1. Um, so let's see here. I am more excited about the base version than anything else. It's got everything I put on my similar path on the pod go. Seems like an easy recommendation if it sounds good. Yes, totally, Jesse. And you know what? From my experience with the base, I've been thoroughly impressed by the base, um, the pod express base, as much as I've been with pod express guitar. Now I'm not a bass player, so you know when we when I demonstrate it next week, I'm going to really be leaning on you bass players. Um, is any anyone who's here today who wants to join us next week when we go over Pot Express bass? Um, I'm really going to be looking at you guys to tell me what you think because um, I'm not a bass player by trade. You know I may throw in some bass lines. You know when I'm, you know doing some of my you know own personal music and stuff, which isn't very often, but. You know, I, I've been hearing great things from some friends who have got it myself, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, let's see here. Love this new format. Brings back memories of the pod tube when it only had knobs instead of menu diving. Impressive value. Congrats. Um, what a great time to be into guitar. I know, right, Julian? I was saying earlier, imagine if I had this when I was 13 and 14 years old when I started playing guitar. The the, the little, it was like, a, it was silver, it had two buttons, and it had a round screen on it with numbers. And that's what told you what effect or what preset you're on and it sounded god awful it did not sound good and um you know it, if i had this then it's just amazing um you know guitar players nowadays especially the newcomers who would be a perfect candidate um for a pot express for the newcomers to modeling they are just spoiled with what we have um this hx modeling is just you know it's just fabulous so let's see here, uh, going down the line, just answering question after question. Oh yeah, that's impressive. Very cool with the guitar volume dropped. Awesome, Arthur, I'm glad you're able to hear that. Sorry for kind of being late to your um, statement here. Um, since we have um, all these questions, which is fantastic, um, I'm a little behind on getting to you because um, we've been streaming, I think, for an hour now, Let's, I, I, which is really, really cool. Um, Let's see here. I thought I had a little timer, but eh, oh well. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Can you daisy chain um, with the one spot? Now, you know, as long as as long as it's as long as Pot Express is receiving the uh, minimum power requirements, I don't see why not. Um, I can't speak for one spot just because I'm not familiar too much with um, the one spot daisy chain that they have going on but i don't see why not um seeing how pot express can be powered by three AA batteries i imagine that it would do just fine in the in a one spot daisy chain um because i know you can get the one spot and then the daisy chain um addition to that so i don't see why not um it should but since i you know haven't used the one spot i don't want to give you a definitive yes in just in case um wish this would have came before i bought my mx5 well hey you know what it's uh priced very well it's small it's ultra portable you could sneak it in through the door if you got to um <laughs> if you know what i mean um so no worries there and hey nothing nothing wrong with having some more dsp with whatever else you got going on in your rig so let's see with the price it sells it's a monster a little beast I could see myself gigging with nothing else. Thank you, Chris. I totally agree. Like I've been saying, you know, this would have been so much easier if, if I would have had something like this and even Pod Go, right? You know, back when I was, you know, 16, you know, playing shows and stuff, my back probably wouldn't hurt today for, you know, picking up my 412 to be put on a stage. And I'm sure many of us here can, um, <laughs> you know, many of us here can relate to that. You know, I'm sure many of us here have some back pains, you know, because of, lifting on our amps or maybe even the bass players you know heavy gear as well so let's see here mine arrived saturday really excited congrats hewitt um very excited that you are getting this as well like i said i've been having fun with this for a couple months now and i just have been floored at just how fantastic it is i haven't you know my helix have has collected dust because i've been having so much fun with this guy all right so uh <laughs> how funny yeah years back i did a gig with my pocket pod i used the jump setting with all effects off and nobody noticed i am certain gigs could be easily done with this unit i totally agree arthur 
And, um, you know, when I used to be in stores doing store visits um, back, you know, before the pandemic, um, I used to have uh, sales associates like, oh, dude, check out this recording. And I and I would go, man, this sounds great. What did you use? And they'd go, I used the pod. And, you know, they would always fool me because I always thought they mic'd something up. And even myself, you know, it's just amazing at what you can do, um, you know, with these kinds of devices. Um, let's see. Uh, this may have already been answered, but how many presets can you save on this? Dave, no worries. So you can save up to 21 presets um, on Pod Express. So pretty much the first seven are the amp models. So as you go through, the first seven is the clean amp, special song, and so forth. But you have three pages of seven. So here's page one, here's page two, and here's page three. I could use the the foot switches to toggle up or down the list, or I could use the amp encoder to do that as well. And then if I wanna select that preset, I could either push both uh, foot switches or just the amp encoder. And so uh, 21 presets all together. Um, let's see here, uh, mine is going back. I might grab the base one too, <laughs> that's killer. And you know, imagine having both on your board as well, You know, whether you're a guitar player or a bass player. You know, you could daisy chain them, have have all sorts of fun. So, uh, so let's see here. Kosh and Bluetooth will create latency. Wires are still king for DAW. And, you know, Dan, I can't disagree with that at all. Bluetooth Bluetooth is, is cool and all, but, um, you know, I think the best connection, wireless connection is Wi-Fi, honestly. You know, using a 2.4 or a 5 gigahertz. And so, you know... So, but something like this, you know, Pod Express, it isn't, it isn't this crazy deep dive kind of product. So, you know, the whole Bluetooth thing wouldn't be needed, I would say, you know, but that's why I was saying earlier, it's so easy to get something new and say, man, you should have added this, you could have added that, you know, um, but Pod Express, Bluetooth, stuff like that, you don't need it. All right, moving over, Joel. Yes, thank you. Um, is it possible? Let's see here. What do we got here? Is it possible to do emulated out on one of the outputs? Um, emulated out, Brad, not to uh, uh, resubmit that question. Um, and I'll see if I can answer that for you. Uh, let's go here. Understood. Thank you. Steal a deal. Perfect, Dan. Thank you so much. Um, I thought there was going to be an editor. Um, so, oh, for sure. You know, I think a couple people just assumed, you know, there was going to be an editor for sure or you know like with hx1 we have the uh, librarian as well but like i said we're line six you know we're always innovating who knows what the future holds it's just currently i just have i have no info to offer on that so my apologies um so let's see here six orange um six orange six can you turn off cab sim you sure can so you could turn off amp um amp or cab in when we look at this little uh, blip right there, if you just go to the six o'clock position, I just turned amp modeling off. If I wanna turn cab modeling off, if you push the uh, tap and the alt, you can choose a different cabinet. Oh, well, what did I do there? There we go. So if I wanna turn cabinet modeling off, I would just roll to that six o'clock position and that'll turn the cab sim off. So cab is off, now cab is on. And for those of us who are just joining, and you know, if, if I'm getting that question, I'm sure you may want to see what cabs are in here. So those are the cabs and the in the positions as well on where to access them. And so yes, you have the off position, which is that six o'clock mark right there. And the same goes for the uh, amp as well. So you could turn both off or one or the other off, and um, you know, and run Pod uh, Pod Express into whatever you know whatever you choose. Um, and have that kind of control. So very cool stuff. Um, so what is the battery life? I believe um, off of uh, some good, uh, you know, some good lithium triple or double A batteries. Uh, I believe you get up to six hours. It could be eight, but I'm going to be I'm going to play it safe and say a solid six hours. Um, double check in the owner's manual, but um, you know. Every battery's manufacturer could be different. If you're using rechargeable batteries, that's going to affect the battery life as well. But um, you know, you're going to get a solid six hours, um, especially um, you know, out of the batteries that you know we can uh, we get with you, uh, or that we include with the uh, Pod Express. Now, when you uh, plug in 
if when you're using the battery power and you plug in uh, via quarter inch, it will it will do this power cycle with a colored ring and it will tell you how much battery life it has um, when you plug in. It'll tell you all the way up to six or eight hours, all the way down to if you have less than 30 minutes. Um, since I'm connected to my DAW, if I power off right now, it's, you know, you know how it is when you disconnect a, uh, a uh, interface, how, you know, everything kind of freaks out. So I'm not gonna do that. But if you were to go on our website, download the owner's manual, um, it will tell you exactly, you know, how many LEDs means how many hours and how many hours you will get from fully charged batteries. So check out the owner's manual for a 100% answer on that, but great question. Um, can USB-C power it too? Yes, it can. And that's actually how I'm being powered right now. Even though I have batteries in the back, if I disconnect the batteries, it will still stay powered. But it will be, it can be powered via USB. Um, however, it will only be powered from your computer. If I were to plug this into my phone or my smart device, the chances of it being powered from those is unlikely um, because there's just not enough bus power coming out of those outputs. So, yes, it will be powered from your computer. Um, but if I want to plug into my iPhone or a tablet or something, then it will run off of your battery power. So again, that's why you, you, you hear us or you see us saying how this is ultra portable. And that's why, you know, I could literally, you know, I could be sitting in the park and plug into my phone and do a live stream. I could be in, I could be on top of, you know, Mount Everest and, you know, record a session on my phone, you know? Um, so that's that ultra portability that we mean here. Um, so beautiful. Look, <clears throat> is it worth the price? Just get it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Straight to the point. Um, I'm a veteran guitar player and this excites me. Very, very cool. Um, and yeah, no, definitely. Uh, it, it excites me as well. And that's why, you know, so much of my gear <laughs> is collecting dust. I have a, you know, I have a 78, a 1978 Marshall JMP to the left of me right now. That's just collecting dust. Um, you know, because I just, because I have all these good toys and now it's going to probably collect another layer of dust because I now have this pot express. So looking here, sorry if I lose it, but can I edit presets on my PC? So Franco, um, there is no editor at the moment, um, no information on if or when one is coming. And so currently all the editing that you will that you would be doing will be directly on the device itself. So thank you for joining today and thank you for your question. Um, this looks like a great backup. I mean, come on, all these sounds that can be held in a fanny pack. <laughs> Seriously, I know. And, and again, you don't need a power cable or anything like that. As long as you have, you know, as long as you have a guitar, a quarter inch cable and this, you are set. That's all you need. So yeah, it, it's definitely the fanny pack travel rig, right? Mine should arrive tomorrow. Beautiful. Again, you know, so many of us are, are expecting ours tomorrow. You know, it's going to be a really good Friday for a lot of us. So please get them, take pictures of them, you know, jam out, um, send us your videos, you know, post to your social, um, you know, on this little thing, because with how awesome of a pedal this is, how easy it is to interface with your smart device or your computer, you know, you could, you could be recording and doing videos and stuff in no time. So let us know how you're enjoying it. Um, I look forward to, to you guys getting yours because I've been spoiled, you know, for the past couple months working on this thing and I just have been giddy until this moment because I, I just knew everyone, if, if I'm as excited as I am about this, I knew everyone else would be. So let's see here. I'm going to take a quick drink um, just to wet the whistle. Let's see here. Mine should arrive tomorrow. I telecommute, and this will be getting used a lot during meetings. That's killer. Very cool. So awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Curious to, you know, I'm even more, that makes me even more curious on, uh, on, on what you're doing and, you know, what your career path is. So that is killer. Awesome that we can help, um, help you in your endeavors in that regard. Um, let's see here. Is, uh, is the cab global or per preset? So, so the how the cabs work is the cabs are actually matched per amp model. So taking a look here, you know, 
regardless, it doesn't matter what preset I'm in. I could be in this preset and the effects and the amp parameters are set to that preset, right? But if I move this amp encoder, I'm now choosing the dynamic, which is that Ben Adrian cartographer. If I choose the crunch, it's going to be that placate or dirty. And if I choose that heavy, it's going to be that line six oblivion, right? So as I'm choosing these different amp models, these cabinets, these cabinets are automatically matched to that amp. So it's not so much a global thing, and that's not so much the question to be asking here. Um, the, the question is, is do the cabs change when I change the amp model? And that's, and the answer is yes, because these cabinets are matched to your amp. Now you may go, well, you know, heavy, what cabinet is it signed to the, to the heavy? Oh, it's the, uh, you know, the 412 double XL V30. Well, what if I want the Uber V30 instead? Well, you just hit the tap and the alt foot switch. And then I would move to the Uber V30, which is dynamic. And you notice the LED is now pink. See that? So now I'm using the heavy amp, which is the Line 6 Oblivion, and I'm using the 412 Uber V30. So you could change those cabinet models per amp. And so, so great question. Um, that's how you can really kind of dive in and you know change the cab sounds um, if you'd like. For myself, I haven't had to do that. I just think it sounds really, really good. But you know, again, we are all we all like to tweak stuff, right? We're all guitar players here. We all have gear and toys. So I know that many of you will love to switch that stuff around. So yeah, again, it's not so much a global thing. It's more of like a, a cab match to amp thing. And can you change stuff around? The answer is yes. So good stuff, good stuff. Um, Will it, it will take Velcro to the back? Um, I think so, I'm taking a look here. Um, what, what comes in the box are, uh, you do have the four feet, the four rubber feet. So that comes in the box that you can add here and you can see where you would put those. Now, will it take Velcro in the back? Keep in mind, if you plan to use batteries with it, um, you know, you may not wanna do a strip across. If you do a strip of Velcro just on the back plate, will it rip it out? It, it, it could. Um, you know, but what I would do if, if you want to do the Velcro thing, I would avoid the back plate and just go here. Um, I recently finished doing some sales training videos on this uh, for salespeople, and I used uh, some really good uh, gorilla tape in the back of this because I was plugging stuff in and out, and in, and on camera you don't want your you know you don't want your stuff moving around, and it was fine. You know, if we all know the gorilla tape, that stuff sticks, man. It it is like. You know, it, it really, really sticks and it, and it was fine, you know, but I avoided the battery backplate because I don't want to rip that out again. You know, it's durable, it's plastic, but you know, if you're, if you're pulling that thing, you know, you're using dual lock or whatever it may be, you know, it may be a little too much, just avoid the battery plate. So let's see here for the year. All right. I'm excited. Is there a latency by changing amps? So. I don't think we've uh, demonstrated changing amps. I know we've demonstrated changing cat or changing presets. So for those of us here um, who may have not have heard it, here's a nice clean sound. So here's clean. Let's change some presets here. So here's clean, and I'm going to go from a dirty. I'm going to go from clean, heavily distorted to an overdrive. So. That's how quick you could change that, but now let's move amps around. Is there a latency? Here, let's turn these let's turn these effects off. No latency there, right? So I hope that answers your question, uh, a Bennis there. So no latency at all. Moving down, USB powered hub. So um, I'm actually. I'm actually plugged into a into an insignia. I think that's it, right? Let's take a look. So just so you know what my setup is currently, is PodGo is going USB out into a USB 3.0 insignia USB hub. And then that's going into my MacBook Pro right now. And it's one of those new Mac... Now, granted, I could uh, plug directly into my MacBook Pro, but I'm... You know, it's one of those new uh, Apple laptops where you actually, you know, need to plug in a hub. 
because it's only USB-C. So you need to plug in a hub to have HDMI for my screens and regular USB. So I'm plugged into a couple hubs right now. And so you're, that's what you're hearing Podgo going through. And that's how Podgo is being powered. So yes, Podgo, as we see here, can be powered. Now we don't recommend to, you know, to update your Line 6 products or really to record and use them with USB hubs, but I'm using a powered Insignia 3.0 um, USB hub. So this thing has the horsepower, um, you know, to, to do what it's doing. So as you can see, I've had great results. So yes, you can do that. Um, you just can't power a check. Uh, you, you just can't power Pod Express through the uh, USB connection of a smart device. Um, there's not enough power there. Uh, but currently, I'm being powered through that USB hub. Let's see. Can it output emulated amp out as well as the headphone out? Basically, can you control the I/O in the app? So um, there is no application. Um, pretty much uh, to answer your question here, can it output? Can its output be emulated and amp out as well as the headphone out? So pretty much the uh, outputs, what you're going to get out of the um, quarter inch and the 3.5 out is the exact same output. You cannot change or alter what gets sent out of which output. Um, it you either have the direct outs to go to a mixer, a powered amp, or speakers or you have the headphone out and that's it. You, you, you can't change what's getting sent out of those. So I hope that answers your question there, Brad. Um, can you connect a MIDI controller? Um, since we don't have MIDI, um, no, you can't. It also does not support MIDI over USB. Again, Pod Express isn't that kind of product. If you're looking for MIDI and stuff like that, I would turn you towards you know, another product. I would like, like let's say an HX Stomp or something like that. Um, Pod Express, just like Pod, you know, Pod Go, right? Pod Go doesn't, you know, have you, um, you know, a MIDI DIN. Um, so we're looking at simplicity here. You know, again, if you're just dipping your toe into modeling and stuff like that, if you're if you're getting new, if you're new to modeling, um, you know, they'll you're probably not too avid with MIDI, right? So that that's kind of our thought process with Pod Express here. But if that's something you need, we definitely do have products um, that support complete MIDI mapping. Um, Pod Express just isn't that product. Um, let's see here. Do you need do you need an FRFR speaker? You don't need one. You know you can plug this. This could be a part of uh, of your uh, pedal board. Um, you can plug this into the back of a of an actual uh, traditional amplifier through the effects loop, um, through the power amp in. You could even plug it into the front of the amp. Um, you know you really could plug it into whatever you'd like. Now if you were to plug it into a FRFR speaker. Um, that's probably where it's just going to shine the best um, because I could just plug right in and I have everything ready to go. Um, you know, in full range flat response, you know, you're going to get every single frequency, you know, that you need there. But if you want to plug this into an amplifier, then, you know, maybe I would turn the cabinet modeling off because you don't need a modeled cab if you're already, if you're going through a traditional cab. Um, so it's just think of that, you know, if I plug into an FRFR speaker, studio monitors, a PA speaker, I just plug in and I'm ready to go. If I want to plug it into a traditional amplifier or a, and stuff like that, then I would probably encourage you to turn off the cabinet modeling, you know, or maybe if you want to use just effects, turn the amp and the cab off and use just the effects, right? So it, it all depends what you're plugging into. Um, you know, you, you may want to turn one th something off here or there to just kind of, you know, complement the entire rig that you're using here. So let's see here. Mine will be my streaming rig. Awesome, G-Man. And as you can see, I've been streaming for, you know, over an hour here and it's been doing great. Um, so beautiful there. I missed my question about possibly loading amps and effects available through Line 6 Helix. Let's see here. I missed my question about the possibility of loading amps and effects available through Line 6 Helix. So pretty much um although you know you you won't there there isn't anything currently sorry my thing's glitching here there isn't a way to load amps or change the effects you know we don't have an we don't have an editor or anything like that um so pretty much although every amp cab and effect is pulled from helix um you do not have the ability to change um any of the effect models or cab models um are there plans to i for the near future, I have no info on that. 
Um, I, my my assumption is going to be probably not, um, you know, just due to the simplicity of Pod Express and the whole idea that Pod Express is supposed to offer amazing sound in an ultra portable fashion and also be very easy to use. All right, so hopefully that answers your question there, G-Man. Moving on, uh, let's see. So let's see, Arthur, I would love to have one cab on the left side, another on the right. Can we do that with this unit? So, uh, no, you cannot, Arthur. Um, you cannot have, um, so pretty much you, that would be kind of a, a two cabinet in a split fashion here. Um, that's gonna be an HX Stomp thing. Um, even Pod Go, even Pod Go offers just one amp at a time. And so you're asking for Pod Express to do something that Pod Go doesn't even do. And so if that's something that you need and something you're curious about, I would um, turn you over to um, an HX Stomp. You know, that's an HX Stomp customer right there, not a Pod Express customer. Great question though, love it. Um, let's see here. Can you put this into the effects return of an amp mo uh, in the, of an amp and use it as an amp modeler with effects, or is this for the heat? Helix preamp only version or the HX stuff. So, you know, of course, you could totally put this in through the effects loop return. So you're saying like the power amp return of, uh, of a traditional amp, why not? Um, you totally can. Keep in mind that amps here, you know, are the full amp model. It's not a preamp model. Um, and, that's the, and that's what you're saying there about, you know, the Helix preamp versions. You have the ability to choose just the preamp of every amp model. With Pod Express, you have the whole amp model, and the amp models that we have here are displayed right there on the right side of the screen. So yes, you can you know go into your tap and alt, and I could go and I could turn my cabinet modeling off and have just these just these amps and send that into the effects loop of a traditional amp, and there you go. You have yourself all these different amp tones and all these effects, and they sound great going through your effects loop. So yes, you totally can. Um, I just ordered one. I just wish they had an aux. Why did they leave that out? Um, let's see for those who don't see them. Um, why did they leave that out? This is a perfect advice to want to have a way to jam along with headphones or other music. So totally, um, you know, Tone G, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, you know, of course, like I said earlier, um, the whole idea here is affordability as well. Um, but keep in mind, you know, you can run your smart device, so your phone, your tablet, um, you can run that via USB directly into your Pod Express and then and send music that way. So that is where your auxiliary is going to come into play here. Um, so you know that would be the uh, that that would be the way to do it with Pod Express. Um, can I use this in Pro Tools, Victor? Um, you oh sorry, Vic. So Vic, yes, you totally can. And what's funny is you're hearing my Pod Express going through Logic Pro right now. So, you know, I plug this in and then it just shows up, um, you know, when I go into my audio source, it shows up as Pod Express Guitar Audio. And, um, you know, and if you've been on the stream, if you've been on the stream today, you know, you can tell it sounds great. <laughs> Sorry guys, hands are so stiff today. But yeah, so I'm running through through Logic, right? Of course you could run through Pro Tools. Um, so when you loop, does the delay still work? So uh, when you loop, does the delay still work? So it sh So what's happening is if I go to this, that's a great question. Since I'm not much of a looper. <laughs> So like, for example, here's the uh, ping pong delay. If we go to the looper, I don't believe so. It's not, or at least here, it's not going to work. So let's record something. I'm just going to, you see, as soon as I, as soon as I stray away from the looper uh, to put on a delay, it's gone. So what I believe is happening here and when we look at the signal flow, the delay and the looper are like they're they're one block. And you and just think of the processing that we have going on here. Um, it's just kind of one block. So no, um, to answer your question there, the delay is you know once you the the looper is the delay. So once you go to the looper, that delay is is no more. Um, so great question there. 
uh, let's see, thank you. That's the way to go. Um, how, how do drop tuning sound? Um, I think uh, I think they could sound pretty well. Um, let's 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 see. The only the quickest drop tuning I could do now is drop D. Um, I'm already in um, half step down. Whoop, sorry about that. So let's go to this lead set. Or actually, let's go to heavy. Not too bad. Let's hear crunch with some drop D, just for Arthur here. Yeah, I think that I think that heavy I think that heavy setting is where it's. At. Damn, that's not that's a really heavy sound too. <laughs> so there's your uh, drop tuning specifically for Arthur. Thank you for that. Um, he mentions a little, is this uh, geared more towards beginners um, getting into modeling? So Robert, uh, you know, this, th those kinds of players are who, who we had in mind when we designed Pot Express. Um, you know, for those just dipping their toe, um, for someone's first modeler, um, but then for, you know, a lot of us here in the live stream today, a lot of us here are pretty avid users. A lot of us here own a lot of gear, maybe own a lot of Line 6 gear and other people's gear already. Now, just because this was designed or geared for, you know, maybe someone who's just getting into modeling, it's still HX modeling. Every amp, every cab, every effect model is straight, directly pulled from Helix. So that's what makes this product so amazing is that even though you, this may be your first modeler or maybe you've been playing guitar for a long time and this is your, you know, the first time you've got something that is a modeler, not just because, not just for the person who just picked up guitar. Um, that's what makes this thing so phenomenal is that it's affordable, it's ultra portable, and it has the, the flagship award-winning HX models into it. So whether it's for little Johnny or, you know, or grown up adult Johnny who's been playing guitar all his life, it, it doesn't matter who you are. It's a perfect addition to your arsenal. Um, but when you're looking at MIDI and can I do two dual amps? Can I do, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, can, can I, can I stack multiple amps and, you know, all these, you know, really kind of uh, pro user, deep dive user of, um, things that are coming up. It doesn't do those stuff because if this is your introduction into modeling, you know, that's why, you know, something like a Helix, you know, could could just be very intimidating because someone who's just starting off doesn't need all that stuff. Um, and so that's why Pot Express is perfect. But hey, someone like me who has, you know, every Helix and every modeler imaginable, um, I'm still stoked about this because, you know, it, it's just so easy to get a great sound and it does everything. Um, Let's see here on Windows, no drivers or software to be installed with Ableton. So with, uh, with Mac, you just plug on in and, and since, you're, since the Mac recognizes it immediately, that means any DAW or anything else I use recognizes it. I believe with Windows, it needs an Osseo driver. Um, pretty much with all of our products, um, for it to be recognized by a PC, you need an Osseo driver. So. As long as your computer recognizes it and sees it as a uh, as an input and output source or a sound card, um, then your Ableton should read it as well. Just like just like how it, it would work with any other interface. Um, so yeah, if you're a PC user, you can get the Osseo driver on Line6.com forward slash forward slash software. Put in that uh, Pot Express is your product, and it will show you all the available downloads uh, for Pot Express. Um, have you already demoed the tuner and looper? So we checked out the looper a bit since I have this on a tabletop. Um, 
I can't really do a great sounding loop, but I could definitely show you how that works. Um, so let's go to something a little cleaner here. There's my clean. So if we want to look at the tuner. So, all right, so my E is out of tune, right? So let's go to the tuner, tap, press and hold tap. So now I'm gonna tune up. So this is how, you know, this is me tuned down really low. I'm missing the mark, so let's tune up. Tune in. Oh, we're all up, and there we are. So now, I could kind of tune the whole guitar this way. You know, all right, A is looking good. D is looking good. It's a pretty forgiving tuner. See, now I'm a little sharp there. A little flat. A little flat. A little sharp. Okay, now there we are. And, and there we are. Nice and tuned. Real quick, easy to do it. Um, for the looper, pretty much you have, you know, we go into record mode. Double tap to play and stop, so play, stop. And double tap to stop it, press and hold to erase it, and there we go. So I did a nice annoying loop for you so that would keep your attention and show you how uh, the overdub works. So quick, easy looper. Um, you got 30 seconds of looping right there, which is you know fantastic for such a small pedal. So beautiful stuff there. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just call you Soprano. All right, so let's see here. Author, wish I could easily go from Motown Smoothies to rip your guts out tone with this unit. That's right, you surely can. Um, Let's see here, when you plug uh, Facebook into an iPhone, does it send audio to the iPhone in, headphones on the iPhone or the pedal? Um, so pretty much, if you plug this into your iPhone, let's say, and you're using this as your audio send, you would wanna plug your headphones into Pod Express um, because then that way, you're going to hear whatever audio your phone is sending and you will hear your Pod Express simultaneously. Now, if you have a DAW on your phone, um, I know like iPhone, you can get like GarageBand on your phone. I'm not sure what else is out there, but um, you know, if you have a DAW on your phone, then your DAW is going to take the Pod Express sound input, and then that way you would plug your headphones, you know, in, into your phone or Pod Express. It all depends on uh, on the application that you're using, you know. So the connection from Pod Express to a smart device. Is is obvious and set in stone through USB. Now, how your how your how the application deals with you know the audio sends is per an application basis. But if I was to just plug this into my my you know I'm an iPhone user, so if I plug this into my iPhone right now, um, I could send music directly. My audio send I will send through Pod Express. So I will plug my headphones into Pod Express. I'll pull up a video on YouTube or something on iTunes or Spotify, and I could jam along with that song. So that's kind of the workaround there. Um, let's see, Flo right, Nick, hope all is well, going well. Uh, thank you very much, I appreciate it, um, same to you. Um, let's see here, quick question, as a backup rig, is there a way to attach a foot pedal to switch between presets? Also, thoughts on utilizing as a live rig opposed to a backup? Um, you totally can. So taking a look at the signal flow, we have a volume pedal after the cab. So you can connect one expression pedal to the volume jack here and control volume, or you can, con or you can plug in a, let's say a dual foot switch and you can assign um, the bypass state of individual effects to a foot switch. You could, you could have one foot switch or two foot switches connected to do that. You could also have one foot switch and uh, one expression pedal connected simultaneously, and you can control volume and the bypass state of a single effect 
You can also adjust each, um, you could repurpose any of the foot switches to be the bypass state of an effect as well. For more information on that, please go to our website, um, go to the product page, um, you know, go over to support and um, download, uh, take a look at the owner's manual because the owner's manual will show you the uh, global settings table and, um, and all that stuff where you can really get all those questions answered. Let's see here. Is it possible to turn off the cab simulation um, for one output only? Unfortunately, no. Um, so pretty much whatever out, whatever is getting sent out of the headphone or the main outs, it, it, they will be mirrored. Um, so you can't control what goes out of which output. Um, pretty much whatever you get out of the main outs is what you're going to get out of the headphone out and, and vice versa. So um, coming up on a, I think we've been here for, for gosh, uh, well over an hour. So I'm going to have to going to have to wrap it up quick, but I want to make sure I answer all of your questions. Um, how does the 60s spring reverb sound? So the reverb that we're using in, uh, in Pot Express is a Line 6 original. I'm going to assume we're using the hot springs, but let's take a listen to at the, uh, you know, uh, what we have here, Surf City. Um, <laughs> great name for the question you're asking. Um, how does the spring reverb sound? Well, let's take a listen. We're going, going into single coil mode here. I'm going to turn all the effects down and let's go to uh, nice and clean. All right, going to the spring reverb. Let's crank it up a little more. You know, I could even get a little bit of a boost going. So when I turn up that boost, it's kind of giving me some more volume. So I'm going to turn the amp volume, the amps master, uh, the amps channel volume down a bit. All right, cranked up the boost a little bit. Crank up. That. So as you can see, that that's some some full on spring reverb there. There it is turned up all the way. Could turn that down just a little bit and let's crank up uh, maybe a, um, our Scream 808, which is right here. Not a bad sound. So not a bad sound at all. <laughs> I think that sounds great, and the spring reverb is just enough. So Surf City, hope uh, you know, hope that is good for you, for your Dick Dale and whatever else um, in your surf guitar endeavors. So thanks for that question. Um, is the tuner locked, or could you do say drop D? So the tuner, the the tuner is a chromatic tuner. So. It, it's it, it's just going to go chromatically down the line with you. So for example, you know, I'm tuned down to a half step right now. Um, so I'm D flat. So if I keep, so if I keep, a, so if I, uh, or E flat, I'm sorry. So I'm a half step down E flat. So if I keep tuning up to standard, there's standard tuning. But if I want to go back down to E flat, there's E flat. So it's a chromatic tuner. So it's just going to keep telling you where you're at as you go through the register. So great question there. Um, I love line six because making private, it's a sorry, guitar port. Beautiful. Love you. Thanks. Flow ride. Love it. Will the do foot, let's see here. Will the dual foot switch um, allow to change to a different amp setting? If not, it's okay. I was just definitely feeling the volume drop on the guitar for a cleaner sound. Totally. So no, the foot switches are external foot switches or any of the foot switches are only going to give you the ability to turn stuff on and off. Um, you're not going to be able to switch effects. You're not going to be able to switch amps or cabs or anything like that. Um, foot switches are just going to give you the ability to turn things on and off. Um, and so definitely. And to, to know, to, to, to really get down to the nitty gritty, go on our website, get that owner's manual. And um, check out that global settings table. The global settings table will tell you all of that information for sure. Um, because you may leave 
today's stream and another question comes up and I'm not here, check out that owner's manual. It'll help out. And plus, hey, you know, check it, check us out next week on Thursday because what I'll do, like I said earlier, I think I'm going to have this on the ready um, with with a t uh, TRS cable with a Pot Express base. Um, just so for those of us who didn't see it in action today, we can see it next week. So great stuff there. Killer live stream. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you guys. You you know, you're the ones that make a live stream like this as fun as and awesome as it is because you guys give me so many, you know, so many good questions and so much good stuff to talk about. So um, so I thank all of you for this being a, a great live stream. So thank you. Uh, beautiful. I'm really digging the stream. It's helping uh, satisfy <laughs> my guitar junkie nerdiness. Well, thank you so much. And I appreciate you guys being here. You know, this is a lot of fun. And, um, you know, being able to talk shop, especially about something new like this, um, it's just killer. And um, I love it. So, you know, thank you guys. I appreciate all of you for being here. Um, awesome. Hey, Surf City, check out Review of the Pedal. It drips too. <laughs> I love it. Very good, Lindsay. Very good. I love that response. Um, looking forward to getting mine. Last question for me because I love that it's simple in and out. Is that just the headphones volume or does that affect the main outs volume as well? Tone G, thank you for asking. That is a great question. So this is the master volume. So when you think of, you know, the volume knob on a Pod Go or the big volume knob on a um, Helix, this is the master volume. So this is the master output volume for headphones and the out and the quarter inch outputs, but not not the not the uh, USB out. The USB out is a set line level, and so everything you've been hearing, um, you know, in my DAW right now, you know, th this is you know, if I turn this down all the way, you know, the volume's turned down all the way, but you're hearing a perfect line level. Um, but if I was going out of the quarter inches or the headphone out, that that's the volume you'd want to be using. So for all of us who get our Pod Express tomorrow or, you know, moving forward, you know, when you plug into headphones or anything, make sure you turn this down all the way because we want to protect our hearing and you don't want to blow yourself away. So keep that in mind. This controls volume for all the outputs minus the USB. So great question. Thank you, Tone G and Lindsay and Surf City. Much appreciated. Well, other than that, guys, I'm going to say stick a fork in me. I am done. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for all your questions. Um, this is probably one of the you know funnest streams I've had in a long time. Um, all your questions were awesome, and um, if you have more questions, feel free to put them in the chat, and um, you know, and I could chime in you know later on. Um, and really, any other questions you have, um, you know, put them here. Ask on our you know, send us a message. Um, ask on our Facebook. But other than that, thank you so much for joining today. I appreciate all of you. Um, I hope to see you know all of you on the next stream, um, especially you bass players, or if you know any bass players, um, have them check us out uh, next week, Thursday, um, same time as today. We're going to be talking about Pot Express bass, um, and also for those of us, um, it sounds like a lot of us are you know probably getting you know getting one of these tomorrow, and so on and so forth. Just want to share with everyone um, if you go to our. Uh, if you go to our website, line6.com forward slash events, we actually have free Line 6 lessons. So if you want to talk about Pod Express, Pod Go, whatever it may be, um, you would just pretty much sign up here and you'd get a lesson um, with myself. So if you liked what we had going on today and you want to do kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing on your own time, you know, we'll you know throw up Zoom or something like that. Go to that link and um, you know just sign up and we'll get you going on a lesson. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave you guys with that link um, in case you want to check us out and um, get a lesson. But other than that, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for your involvement and um, your awesome questions. Um, highly appreciate you guys and um, thank you again. My name's Nick and um, until next time, uh, I will see you on the next stream. Take care, guys. <laughs>